I want you to take the time to lay aside everything you've expected to see this morning. I want you to take the time to listen to what God is trying to say. Sometimes our expectations get in the way of what God wants us to see. Picture with me, if you will, a lady, broken. She's caused shame to her family. They are so hurt by what she has done to them that they have disassociated themselves with her name. When people walked up to them and say, oh, I, I heard about your daughter. How could she do such a thing? They say, what are you talking about? I don't know who that is. What a painful life to be in when your own mother and father do not care to tell people that they love you. They don't care to tell you that they love you. In John chapter 4, we see a Samaritan woman walking to the well, doing her daily routine. She's walking along. She gets to the well. And lo and behold, there's a Jewish man by the name of Jesus sitting there. He says, excuse me, but um, I'm kind of quenched. Would you please get me a drink of water? She says, what are you talking about? I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. We don't talk to each other. This is not acceptable in our society. But you want to know what he said? This was not a normal man, by the way, if you haven't figured that out by now. He said, if you knew the gift of God, if you only knew and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him yourself, and he would have given you living water. What an unexpected response. This lady was just doing in her normal day activity. She didn't expect some savior to come save her out of the depths of her pits of hell that she's been living in for all of her life. I mean, this lady, in that day, divorce was not acceptable. And nowadays, too, a lot of people are judgmental towards people that have been divorced. But even more so, but this lady was not divorced once. No, she was divorced five times. And not only was she divorced, but she was living with someone that she was not married to. And I feel like we've heard this story preached so many times, but it never sinks in who this was. Sometimes that lady is us. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you've been married or not. You can be married to somebody, or you can be married to something. And when that something or that somebody comes along and they say something you weren't expecting and they break your heart, what are you left to do but find something else to go to? And we get so used to who we've been in the past. We get so familiar with our pains and our hurts and we associate that with ourselves. And when someone says, oh, you did a great job. No, I didn't. You don't even know where I've been. How on earth could God give me a talent? But God doesn't say that. He says, you need to get out of that mindset. I'm doing great and mighty things in you. And until you are open to what I'm trying to tell you, you're not getting anywhere. It's like when someone throws you in the middle of the pool when you're little and they say, I trust you. You've been prepared for this. You can do it. You can swim in the deep end. And we're like, no, we can't. We can't do it. We're stuck in the two feet water. We're not ready. God says, you are ready. I work through your pain. Are you ready to receive what I have for you? She certainly was not expecting to hear that. I could just picture it now. God, if you are this God, she says to him later on, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. It's like God gives her this new, fresh revelation, and she's like, oh, that's great. But I'm sorry. I can't do it. You know, you are a Jew, and you don't know what you Jews have done to me. I know about your people. I know how judgmental you are. I know what you think of me. Oh, I'm not falling for this revelation. I'm not, I'm not accepting this. There's too many things going on in my life. You don't care. But this is probably 
not something I would have said to her. It's very deep, but it's very gentle. He says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. Lord, I pray that you would show us what you showed this woman. I pray that you would let us know what you're trying to say to us. You would speak to us and we would be open to hear what you have to say. A lot of times, God places us in a position where there are people around us who are called to minister. And we get so used to the fact that nobody knows what we've gone through nobody knows our past and our pain, that we're not willing to step out and accept the ministry. But even when we are not in a position where we can accept someone else's ministry towards us, God says He rises up within the depths of our being. He gets up and He says, you don't look to your husband for support or for the provision. You don't look to your sister. You don't look to your mom. You don't look to your dad. You look to me. You look to me because they will fail you. It's a fact of life. And if you live your life thinking that your family is perfect, boy, are you in for it. <laughs> you are going to get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we've all figured that out, by now at least. But he says, I'm the fountain within you. I'm within you. And I can't help but picture reading this. Someone in the desert. I feel like Arizona, maybe. In the middle, someone, God drops this person in the middle of the desert, and it's like, there's no water here. Everything looks the same. Everywhere I turn, I just see cactuses and weird animals, and I don't know where I am. And it's like, it's dry. And I feel sometimes that we're spiritually dry. And we expect, oh, I see water. It's an oasis. And we run and we run. Oh, thank you, God, it's water. Oh. It's a mirage. Imagine that, God. You place me here, and I get all excited and fired up for you, and what do you do? You give me something that I don't expect, and you take away what I do. But God says, you know what? It's in the dry times that when you immerse yourself in my love, when you immerse myself, yourself in what I have planned for you, that's when you draw from my living water. That's when you live life fully. There's all sorts of degrees of hurt we've been through. Some of us have been through things that are terribly painful to go through. Some of us have been through other things that may not be that deep, but they still hurt. And God does not look down on the little things. The little things mean as much to him as the big things. He says in all these things, I care and I love you and I want to help you be healed. So when we go through our daily lives and we feel like a woman who has been hurt by whatever it is that we've been hurt by, God says, through you, I will be like that man to that woman. That woman accepted eventually what Jesus had to say. And she went out to her town and to her friends and she told them, this man knows everything about me I've never told anybody before. You see, you can't hide from God. You can't hide from him. We learned that from Jonah. Jonah ran as far away as he possibly could. And what did he find when he got there? He found God. <laughs> Just like Mom said the other day, she went all the way to the other side of Walmart, and God ordained her steps there too. <laughs> so. I think God is telling us when we read this Bible, it is his holy book, and there are nuggets of wisdom in here everywhere. Every page you turn, there's something else you can learn. It doesn't matter how many times you read that scripture. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it preached. It doesn't matter how many times your mother told it to you. There's always something else you can learn from this. <laughs> so today, I just encourage you, you ladies that God has new things on things you didn't expect for him to work through and the little things that seem so insignificant just doing your everyday act of drawing from the well God will work through that too 
And he's got great things in store for every single one of you when we're open and we're willing to listen to him.